didn't need a second invitation. I said, sounds good to me. And that's how it all started. Definitely as a youngster, um, not accepting uh, conventional wisdom, for sure, that's, that's uh, uh, something that shaped my adventurous, curious nature. I wasn't really happy ever just getting to know an animal from ha, ah, whether it was a frog, a bird, a dog, a cat, didn't matter. I would always get down to the level of the animal because I always saw a different side. Met my first two lions at 23, uh, town opponent, and um, had no previous experience working with lions. Yeah, so almost 20 years in the, in the industry. What I thought would be the, the work it would be at polar opposites to the job that I had. So in other words, from people now to animals, I thought, great. I actually prefer working with animals, so this is a fantastic opportunity. Um, but I often say to youngsters wanting to get into the animal world, you've got to be a people's person too. Uh, because unfortunately, the world of nature revolves around uh, people. So if you think you're going to go work with animals and run away from people, you're kidding yourself. Unless you go and become a researcher out in the middle of nowhere, yeah, that, that could work. Certainly doing what I do and being a public figure now, my interactions with people are are huge. I mean, uh, I'm interacting with people on, at every level, on uh, every day. But honestly, yeah, animals are um, are great um, because there's no expectations. They are who they are. They there's no pretenses. They show you exactly where they stand with you, um, and it's up to you to heed uh, the warning or not. Humans. Unfortunately, although, you know, being an animal behaviorist actually puts me in good standing, um, yeah, you, there's still some people that you fi I find difficult to read and, and, and understand their intentions and what they really want. Could I train somebody up to do what I do? Look, I can tell you everything you need to know. I can say, um, don't do this, uh, do do that if it does this to that. But unfortunately, you've got to learn the hard way. And um, you know, when a lion bites you for the first time, and primarily you going, uh, this lion's trying to eat me, then your personality is going to bubble through. You can tell me your personalities as such. I get a lot of people doing that. They say to me, Kevin, I'm the most calm, collected person. I'd be great around animals. Because you have to have a calm disposition around animals. But when a lion does something and you, your, your true reaction comes out, then there's nothing I can do about it because it's too late. So that's up to somebody to figure it out for themselves. I'm saying it definitely takes a certain personality type to get jumped on by a lion. A big lion like Bobcat, who's 215 odd kilos, you gotta be physically tough. You gotta be mentally tough. I mean, I see some things happen to some people and I go, you're acting as though you're dying. You've just, you, you've just got a thorn in your finger. You know what I'm saying? So, or you've just cut your hand with a knife. It's not the end of the world. But some people just, that's the way they are. I don't think many people have it in their, in their guile to, uh, to, do, to, to interact as physically. Yeah, so if I, was, I were to be stranded on a desert island um, and I had a choice between a a human and a lion. I suppose the answer would have to be, I think a lion maybe, because um, it would probably be easier for me. Um, I think you'd initially think that a human might be better because of the companionship. Um, but I think it would just get complicated very quickly. The lion will always be the same. Uh, it doesn't change, you know. Um, so I guess I'll take a lion. I do remember vividly the, the day I met Tana Napoleon. Um, basically, I went to the park and met a guy who was going to take me around. And initially, I was shown to some small cubs, which were quite sweet, you know. Uh, but then he said, well, you know, do you want to see something, you know, quite, 
quite special, you know. <laughs> and, and so he said, yeah, I know, these are six month old cubs. They're quite feisty and uh, quite big, you know, so prepare kind of thing. So we went through a whole network of uh, enclosures and areas, but an array behind the back where nobody could go. It was basically off limits to the public. Um, there were these two little scraggly lions, but looking, beginning to look like proper lions, you know. Um, and I remember thinking, wow, I mean, this, this is a, a lion. It's like, you know, a wild, wild animal. They were quite boisterous. They, you know, they come run up and push you. And uh, I, just re I just remember feeling them thinking, yes, they've got some serious power. You know, the, the size of their paws. And the, what, what struck me uh, was, was the wrist and that forearm. Um, especially, and then they, they like kind of grab you around the leg and put their claws out and you go like, okay, what do I do now? You know, I don't want to piss this little cub off before he bites my leg, you know. <laughs> the guy um, whose park it was said, look, I can see that you had a good time, you know, if you, if you want to go back, let's just go whenever. And I, I often say, I don't think he understood his words or realised what he was saying and to whom <laughs> he was saying it because uh, I, d I didn't need a second invitation. I, th I, was, I just said to myself, yeah, there's something in this. Don't know what it is, something in it, and I want to visit these cubs. Went and visited them every day for about eight months, literally. Um, did my work in the morning, got into my car, went to the park, spent uh, a good few hours with them. Uh, did that until such time as I got called aside one day, and I was told, I, I was actually told that I spent too much time at the park and that, that, that he wasn't comfortable. Um, so I thought, okay, well, it was good while it lasted, but here's the, here's the tell off, you know, don't want you coming around no more. Uh, you know, got the feeling that it was a girlfriend breaking up with you kind of thing. But uh, I was wrong. He actually said to me, look, he's not comfortable because I spend so much time there. He doesn't feel right not paying, you know, not paying me for my time. And uh, he, he, he wanted to know if I would consider working there half, half day. And I didn't need a, again, I didn't need a second invitation. I said, sounds good to me. And that's how it all started.